In this video, we will review the different types of damping of a free oscillator and also something called a Q-factor, what it means, what it measures, and how we can affect it. The following graph was taken from Cognity Online Textbook. You can see if we have an oscillator that has no damping, that would be the black dotted line. Its amplitude remains constant throughout the vibrations. You can see on the y-axis it labels it x divided by x naught. That's at 1, meaning it starts at the first amplitude of x naught. The red line has some light damping or under damping and you can see that over time its amplitude decreases. You should have seen this decrease in amplitude in your examples with water and we should have had a more drastic decrease when you started adding syrup and making a more viscous fluid. The purple line is what we call critical damping. That would be a damping so much that even though we've given it an amplitude, it will go to equilibrium, never overshoot, but just go back to the equilibrium. The difference between critical damping and overdamping is critical does it in the shortest possible amount of time. During your experiment, you should have found using Logger Pro's curve fit lines. This particular one was the best one for your results. You can see that there are two parts to this actual equation. The first part, that actually gives us the amplitude, and we know that it decays exponentially over time. The second part, right here, that's giving us the periodicity. This means there's two parts to the equation. The first part helps us get a decreasing amplitude. The second part is still the periodic motion. You also should have found that increase in the damping did not change the angular frequency. It still remains the same. All that's happening is that the energy is decreasing over time. It's dissipating. Let's take a moment to remind ourselves from the equations from 9.1, simple harmonic motion. We have the angular frequency. We have that the acceleration is proportional to the negative displacement with the angular frequency squared. And the one that we're going to use a lot is going to be the total energy in this particular part. Back in section 9.1, we have the total energy, 1 half m omega squared x naught squared. We said, the total that, we said that the total energy was proportional to the square of the amplitude. And remember, in those cases, the amplitude never changed. But now, over time, our amplitude decreases. Some of that energy is dissipated. So our underdamping, the red line, its energy is an exponential decrease. Whereas the purple line, the energy is dissipated so quickly, it never actually overshoots or goes past the equilibrium. So what we need is a way to be able to describe how quickly the energy was dissipated. For right now, we're gonna use the top equation. The Q factor, two pi, times the energy stored divided by the energy dissipated per cycle. For large values, this will be approximately the number of oscillations the system will perform before it runs out of energy. So we're comparing and having a ratio of how much energy it begins with and how that decreases over time. If this was an undamped oscillation, we'd have no energy dissipated per cycle. So the Q factor would actually be an infinite number, which should make sense that it takes forever to dissipate. A critically damped oscillation would have a Q factor of one half. Take a moment and think about that. Okay, so let's use this data and do a calculation. 
Here's that equation for calculating the Q factor. But we need to find the energy stored in a cycle from our graph. Remember from 9.1? Here's the equation for the total energy in our oscillating system. Let's go ahead and put it into our Q factor equation. Oh, wait a second. Energy dissipated in one cycle. Well, I'm going to have to subtract the amount of energy from the first cycle to the second. Now we always take from the initial one to the peak next, or it could be from trough to trough. You know what I mean. Use the first cycle. Now the nice thing about this is we've got a lot of things that we can cancel out. The m omega squared and the one half will cancel from all these pieces. And what we're going to be left with then let's substitute in some data from our graph x naught equals 2 centimeters while x1 would be 1.5 centimeters so when I put that in my calculator I get around 14 so let's look at the graph. What do you think? Does it look like it would stop oscillating in around 14 complete cycles? Not a bad estimate. One last step. So what if the damping increased? What would that do to our Q factor? The energy would be dissipated more quickly. There would be less cycles before all of the energy was dissipated, that should reduce our Q factor. One thing to note about the Q factor, it doesn't necessarily mean the time it takes for all the energy to dissipate. For example, something like a guitar string, it has a frequency of around say 500 hertz. It also takes around four seconds or so to dissipate. And if you think about that, that would give us about a Q factor of 2,000. So it's due to the frequency being so high that it takes a short period of time. Make sure you work yourself through this. I hope this helps in explaining damping and our Q factors and that you can apply it into the questions coming up.